in all my previous Blender tutorials, I assumed the user knew the basic user interface of Blender, and if not, I told him to go to blender.org. There's plenty of tutorials there, but I decided, since I'm doing so many Blender tutorials, I might as well do one on the user interface uh, to help new users to Blender. Now, the Blender user interface is um, great. It's incredible. It is the best thing about Blender, but it's also the most intimidating thing about Blender. It's different than anything you used, so it's something new to learn and that turns a lot of people away from it but I promise you that if you take the time learn how to use it you'll realize how great it is and you'll wonder why more programs are not set up like the Blender uh, user interface. Um, this is what Blender looks like when you first get it. Uh, when you open it you'll have your 3D view up here if you center click with the mouse you can drag around and see uh, the default cube from different angles. Uh, this here is your camera and this here is your lighting source. They're the defaults. You can add more or remove those, move them around. Um, and down here is your buttons window, which gives you your options for your different items you select. Um, at any time, uh, if you put your cursor over a window up here, this window up here, your 3D view, you can use your number pad uh, to the right of your keyboard to go to some default views. If you hit 7, you're in the top view. Hit 1, you're in front view. 3 is a side view. And 0 is your camera view. Uh, this is, makes it very nice to jump from one view to another. Also, if you hit Z on your keyboard, you'll toggle in and out of wireframe mode. You'll go from solid mode to wireframe mode. Uh, just depending on what you're doing, different uh, things you'll do will require different uh, views in that aspect. You can also change that down here. You have uh, bounding box, uh, wireframe, and solid. While wireframe and solid are two you're going to use most. Shading and then textured uh, towards the end once you start adding textures to your objects. So that's Z for the quick view. Uh, and you'll also notice when we're right here, I hit one to go to front view. You notice that you can see the, the depth of the box there. Um, if you hit 5 on your number pad, it takes away the depth of field. That makes it easier for some editing, uh, and that's how I usually like the view when I'm editing, but sometimes you like to hit on 5 to have that depth so you can see the depth of the box, the perspective of the box. So that's 5 on the number pad. And if you try doing the numbers at the top of your keyboard, you realize they work a little different. They don't control those views. What they control are your layers, which we'll get into more in the future. Uh, but your layers can also be changed here on this little toggle bar here with buttons. If you are using a laptop that doesn't have a number pad, if you grab your toolbar here and drag down, you'll find that you have this whole menu of options for Blender. Uh, if you go over to System and OpenGL, you will find a Emulating Number Pad button here. If you click that, now the numbers at the top of your keyboard act like the number pads, so you can jump to views. And I find that those views are more important than layers, uh, so if you're working on a laptop, you may want to enable that. On a desktop, you probably won't because you have a few full-size keyboard. Some laptops do as well. Real quick, I don't want this tutorial to get too long. Uh, like I said, we have two default windows here. This is your 3D view up here, and this is a button view down here, but either of them can change, be changed to any of the number of windows we have available to us. By clicking this button here, you'll see that you can choose from these probably 10 to 15 different window types. Uh, right now, this view down here is the button window, but if we pick 3D view, it turns into a 3D view just as this one did, and you can press three or seven or drag with your center click button to look around the object. Um, you can also split any one of these windows. If you go in between them you'll see that you get this little double arrow uh, on your cursor which allows you to drag the size of the window but if you right click you can split a window in two. And you can do it again, you can do it as much as you like, you can do a whole lot of splitting and that way you can have one, this one being your camera view, you can have your top view up here, your side view over here, and your front view here, and you can set this back to buttons most of the time. But you can also make this your, your timeline over here, you can make this your IPO curve editor, which these are things we'll get into in the future. 
I can make this one my buttons window. And the buttons window, if I center click, I can drag the buttons around. I could do the same thing it was down here. I can scroll to scroll up and down, but if I hit control and scroll, I can zoom in and out. I can also hit control plus and minus on my number pad to scroll in and out. But you can also right click and set it to vertical. And that way it fits on the side here if you would prefer to have it on your side instead of down at the bottom. So you can customize your view however you like and you can save it by adding a new. Uh, and there's a few presets here uh, that you can go through. Uh, material windows, a sequencer which we'll get into in the future, animation editor, and these are just presets that the creators of Blender put in there for you but you can make your own by going add new, uh, you can create a blank one or duplicate the view you have and name it something else. So that's a quick view on manipulating windows. Oh, let me go, since we split the views, let's go back to our original view here. Um, you can right click on any of these and you can join. And you can join uh, windows you have split. Now in a case like this where we have a window that doesn't match up with the other two windows, you won't be able to split or join that until you have an equal size over here. So we can join these. Now we can join this back over here. We can put this back to our button view and this is our 3D view up here. So that is the beginnings of the Blender user interface. Hope you found this helpful. Filmsbychris.com for more tutorials like this.